Hey guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at 55% level 1 Lynx, ROF, Blue Goku, and Vegeta, the exchange character, as I mentioned in the summon video, as well as I think the Gamma 2 showcase as well. Uh, I recorded this video ahead of time, so this is not live gameplay, but my commentary is going to be live, so I'll be watching the gameplay along with you and doing post-commentary on this just because I was away for the weekend, and I want to get a head start on Link leveling, so uh, this is where we're at here. All right, so the Blue Goku and Vegeta, their leader skill is Realm of Gods or Mastered Evolution, key plus three, 170% attack and defense and HP across the board. Then they give the extra 30% buff uh, to stats for pure Saiyan category allies. So I think taking a look at this leader skill, like in theory, this should actually be a really, really stupidly powerful and premium leader skill, right? Realm of Gods and pure Saiyans. I mean, you got a lot of top tier units in there. Um, unfortunately, I don't. I just don't think we've really gotten that many good contenders recently for this like mixture of of, uh, of categories. So this is definitely, I think, one of the weakest parts of this character. So their leader skill and their team just isn't that great right now. I'm sure it will fill out eventually because you know we're not going to not get any more UI Goku's or Vegeta's or like you know uh, if if other characters decide to get like um, God Key forms in the future. Like what if Broly gets like a God Key form or something? Like, we're eventually going to continuously get updates for the, this team, but as it stands right now, I think this is not really that strong. Um, their super attack effect prior to the exchange is the Super God Shock Flash, so it infinitely stacks attack, causes immense damage to enemy, so just infinitely stacking attack is kind of okay. It's not really that great of a super attack effect there. Then we have the passive skill No More Holding Back. Activates the entrance animation upon entry once only, so I think that's pretty good, right? There's no condition tied to the entry animation, which is, uh, you know, I don't really think a lot of these entry animations have like that crazy of conditions, but at least having just one that's completely void of any kind of like necessary condition to be fulfilled is pretty good because it makes the unit more flexible. Don't have to like build a team around them in any way. Uh, so they get key plus three and they launch an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack for the first three turns from start of turn. So basically once they activate the uh, entrance animation there. Um, then attack and defense plus 150%, and then they get an additional attack and defense plus 50% when performing a super attack. Uh, then they're getting an additional attack and defense plus 25% with each attack performed up to 100%. So they need to perform four attacks, or Goku needs to perform four attacks to get his max passive here. And then he's going to be getting the 50% attack and defense on super attack from that point. So uh, they can get, like, this Goku can get a pretty decent amount of defense once he's fully built up, but. Keep in mind, he's not stacking defense on the super attack effect. He's not even getting defense for a single turn on the super attack effect. So that's one of the weaknesses here, I think, as well. Um, and then we have the active skill, which is the exchange into Vegeta. Going to be activated starting from the fourth turn from the start of battle once only. Exchanges with Vegeta. So pretty easy to get, right? Just turn four and that's it. That's the whole condition. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, then we have the links here. We have Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Warrior Gods, Super God Combat, Resurrection F, Prayer for Battle, and Fierce Battle. Uh, I think most of these links are pretty good, like Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Prayer for Battle, Fierce Battle, Warrior... Like, Warrior Gods is, is not, like, a crazy good link, but it's definitely fine. It's okay. Uh, Super God Combat and Resurrection F are, like, kind of the two dead links this unit has, which is kind of bad because it's two out of the out of the seven, right? Um, so Super God Combat and Resurrection F are both Resurrection F links. So only uh, characters from, um, well, I guess this is only specifically God Goku, uh, Super Saiyan Blue Goku, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, and Golden Frieza from Resurrection F have this link. Uh, attack plus 20% at link level 10. Clearly it's not that good and it's super limited. And then Resurrection F is actually a really good link. Like it's giving one key and then 10% uh, attack and defense, I think at 10, level 10. Uh, but this is only from characters that appear in the Resurrection F saga slash movie, so... Yeah, uh, pretty tough to activate, unless we get, like, a really, really good standalone, like, blue Vegeta from this movie. Because, yeah, I guess you technically could link up Golden Frieza with this guy, which actually wouldn't be a bad idea. So Golden Frieza with this unit would share Prepare for Battle, Fierce Battle, Resurrection F, and Super God Combat, but then you're missing out on Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, and Warrior Gods. Uh, but four links is not bad, I guess. Actually, no, no, what am I talking about? Freeze is not prepared for battle. <laughs> it would be Super God Combat, Resurrection F, and First Battle. You, you'd have three links, which, again, is not crazy good. But then I guess what you could do is you could float off, um, you know, have, have a floating Saiyan, you know, God Key unit or whatever, which would be uh, someone who probably would be able to link up and link up with Super Saiyan, prepare for battle, and Saiyan Warrior Race, maybe. So that could be pretty good. But 
I don't know. I just like, why do they insist on keeping these resurrection F links here? It's just kind of strange. Um, and then in terms of categories, they are on a decent amount of teams. Realm of Gods, Pure Saints, Movie Heroes, Goku's Family, Bond of Master and Disciple, Turtle School, Master of Evolution, Bond of Friendship, Accelerated Battle, Battle of Fate, Power Beyond Super Saiyan, and then Bond of Parent and Child. So um, let's go ahead and go to the Vegeta side of things. So when you exchange into Vegeta after four turns with their active skill, his super attack effect becomes the pride of the warrior race. Greatly raised attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage. Definitely like this super attack effect much better than the Goku's because he's getting the 50% attack and defense boost there. Um, then the passive becomes fight in a new form. So he randomly changes key spheres of a certain type int excluded to rainbow key spheres for three turns from start of turn. So he's a rainbow orb changer for three turns. I'm going to get back to this in a second. Uh, attack and defense plus 150%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% when performing a super attack. Then he gets a chance of performing a critical hit plus 25%, plus an additional key plus one per rainbow key sphere obtained. Um, then he gets an additional attack and defense plus 100% with, with one rainbow key sphere obtained, and an extra 50% defense with two or more rainbow key spheres obtained. So he's getting a lot, a lot of extra stats from rainbow key spheres. So he basically needs to get three rainbow key spheres to get his full passive active, right? Which technically isn't the worst thing ever because he's a rainbow orb changer himself. But the problem with this Vegeta is that he's only rainbow orb changing for three turns. So if you, the second, like that's only like two turns of this guy on rotation, right? So you, you get two rainbow orb changes pretty much from this unit. Um, so if you're fighting in a longer event, like, I don't know, like uh, the Shadow Dragon Red Zone stage or something like that, you, you probably want to stay in with Goku for as long as possible before going to Vegeta because again, you can only get two instances of being able to change rainbow orbs, which means you really only get two instances of being able to reliably get your full passive. And there's even instances where even with the rainbow orb changing, you're not getting the full, you know, passive here because you still need three rainbow orbs, which is not always possible even when you're rainbow orb changing. So that's really the one downside of things to this character. Um, the other thing I will say about these characters that are rainbow orb changing and then also getting buffs based on the amount of rainbow orbs they get, like it, it <sighs> It's, it's kind of hard to, to describe how I feel about it because it's like they're getting like it. Yeah, sure. It's cool that they're rainbow orb changing, but they're only rainbow orb changing because they themselves need the orbs. So because they are rainbow orb changing, but they're also hogging up all the rainbow orbs for themselves. I wouldn't really classify them as like traditional rainbow orb changers because you're not letting your allies get the rainbow orbs. If you understand what I'm saying, like they're providing rainbow orbs to the team but they're also taking the rainbow orbs away from the team so if i was if i was going to be the one to design this character i would have probably not have had this guy rainbow orb change at all but then i would have also had him just get those buffs innately right so he, he just gets the 100 attack and defense and he just gets the 50 percent uh, defense right without having to you know need orbs or whatever so that, I think, is a better way to design these characters, but I don't really particularly have an issue with this. Just an extra step for pretty much no reason. Um, the good thing about this Vegeta is that he does actually share the full seven links with the pre-exchange version of this unit. So I guess if you wanted to, I don't recommend doing this, but you could actually run this guy next to the un-exchange version of this unit. Uh, problem with that is they both want to super first before getting hit, so it's not a good idea to do that, but they don't have extra links there. Um, and so for the teams that I've built for this character, the first one we're going to be looking at is their own team here. Uh, again, this is not a very promising looking team. I mean, uh, I don't think any of the units on this team are particularly bad. Like, there's no bad units here. Um, I brought this guy as a floater because he's going to be linking up the Resurrection F links, right, with the new character, right, Super God Combat, and then uh, Resurrection F over here. Uh, which, you know, should be pretty good. And then we have UI Goku, the AGL one, who's hopefully going to be able to dodge for us. And then we have the uh, Blue Vegeta, the EZA, uh, transforming into Evolution Blue Vegeta. Uh, obviously, I think the LR Super Saiyan God Goku and Vegeta from the Anniversary and then the Tech God Goku EZA are the two better characters on this team as opposed to the other units. But uh, we will see uh, how this team does. And then the other team we have is just, I think, just straight up a better team all around. We have the Gamma version of Movie Heroes. So we have um, both the Gammas together, and then I'm going to have the um, the RF Blue Goku and Vegeta next to the Revival Goku, 
uh, the Carnival Goku from the Worldwide Celebration. I feel like the RF Blues should actually be a pretty decent slot two character for the Revival Goku. So that's what we're going to do here. We have Piccolo floating. We have God Goku floating. Um, God Goku I have on both teams, not only because I think he's just good enough to be here, but also because he is going to be Rainbow Orb changing. So we're going to be able to give Blue Vegeta an extra instance of Rainbow Orbs to potentially hopefully just get his full passive up at all times. So um, let's go ahead and jump in and we'll see how the uh, these teams do here. All right, so the first thing we're going to be doing is jumping into the baby red zone stage. Again, for these 55% videos, I don't really like to jump into like, oh, the toughest fights. Like, okay, we're, we're going to go fight Metal Cooler Core, like the first thing with 55% level one Link's character. Uh, I don't think that's fair to these units, but we're going to be jumping into the baby fight. I think it's a decent middle ground here. And um, I think even for like, you know, new characters like this, for TURs, for Dokkan Fest TURs like this, even at 55% level one links, I think I would still expect uh Sorry, I wanted to get that in. Um, I think I still would expect a 55% level 1 Lynx TUR Dokkan Fest to be able to perform decently well in like a middle tier red zone stage. So uh, we'll see how well this unit does. Again, I think the biggest downfall of uh, this particular unit is just their team is not great. Like their own team, their leader skill team. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, at least we do have type advantage here for the first phase here. 100, what is it, 129,000 defense, what they were at. Uh, again, they do take some time to build up, so that's going to contribute to a decent amount of their defense here, but we will see what kind of numbers they're doing and what kind of damage they're, they're eating in return as well. Okay, so they're taking 43k from type advantage here. Okay. All right, so we're going to start building them up here. This is the first attack. There's a second attack. So we have half their passive built up now. And obviously, they're going to be taking a lot better post attack. Uh, I guess something I'll mention, and I feel like I've been saying this about a lot of characters recently, um, but this this is definitely one of those characters where they're going to be performing a lot better with dupes. Um, whenever you have these characters with like built in additionals like this, like they are always going to be way better with dupes. Um, and you can pretty much say the same thing about like every, you know, like, oh, yeah, you know, they're, they're going to be much better with dupes. But like, for example, I think with like the Gamma 1 and 2, like, I, honestly, I would say that for Gamma 1 and 2, like they're good enough without dupes to where you're like, you don't even, you don't even need to go super deep on their banner. Like them at 55%, I feel like it's good enough to just completely demolish the whole game. Like, is that fair to say? I think it is. Um, and yeah, th they're going to get better with dupes as well, but for a character like this, like the RLF Blue Goku and Vegeta, I feel like they in particular are going to be scaling a lot higher with dupes um, and as compared to uh, uh, the Gammas, for example. All right, so we're going to take the super, not too bad because we're guarding. Uh, we are getting a little bit low on HP. This is the friend Goku and Vegeta, by the way. They are also 55%, but this is a much better term for the, the character, right? We have all the God Key units on this rotation. We have uh, the Blue Goku at the end, given the support. And I believe this guy, yeah, he gets an additional for 5 million. That's pretty good. So he, what is he, super for, for 3.5 first hit, first hit, then he did an additional uh, normal attack, then he supered for 5 million attacks, which is pretty good. Uh, he is stacking up his attack every time he does that as well with his super tech effect. And here's where uh, we jump into the next stage here. We have LRUI Goku, who's surely not going to get hit a single time. Absolutely, definitely going to dodge every single hit. No, Not a question. Uh, <laughs> um... This is very bad. This is not a great spot. We are, what, under 50% HP here? Okay, nice dodge. Okay, nice dodge. Uh, yeah. This is not going well. It's not going too well. Um, hopefully we turn it around here. So, I think he ends up, yeah, he doesn't end up dodging that. And then these guys are going to be supering for a 3.9. Again, not exactly a terribly good number, but... They are building up here. We have no support. There's a second super, 4.6. Pretty significant jump in damage. So they got two super. This is their full passive. Like, they have their full passive built up here. Double digits from normals. And here's the super. They are fully built up, full passive, and 469,000. They're dead. That's it. We lost. <laughs> All right, so we're, 
We're going to jump back into this fight, but we're going to be using a different team that's going to be making this a lot better. We're going to be using the Gammas and the, their movie hero team here. So keep in mind that was a, uh, you know, fully built because we, we did super obviously in that turn. So we, ha we had their full passive. We had all four hits in. We had the 50% extra uh, attack and defense from the super attack during the turn. And don't forget, we also had the support memory active, the movie hero support memory, which does affect them because obviously they're movie heroes. So that was pretty much what you would expect to see from them at 55%. I mean, we, I mean, we didn't have support on rotation, but what is that? 460k damage we took from like a, a second phase of a mid-tier red zone boss. Definitely would expect uh, you know, a new, a brand new Dokkan Fest to be tanking those hits a little better, but it is what it is. Uh, we'll have the Gammas sort of just clean up here. Um, I believe the rotations on this specific run were not the greatest. Where's my uh, Goku and Vegeta here? I think they're floating off of this rotation, right? Yeah. At the very least, they'll give us two hits, and so we'll only have uh, two more hits left to get their full passive built up. But I, again, I want to get them next to the... Um, the Revival Goku, the Carnival Goku. Isn't he? Is Carnival Goku in slot 7 on this run? Is that what happened? No, he's not. Okay, never mind. Like, I had one run where, like, Carnival Goku was in slot 7, and then they had to float off the Goku Vegeta, and it was a nightmare. But this one's not looking too bad. I'm really hoping that Gamma 2 doesn't kill Baby, which he doesn't, which is great. So now we can get some stacks in with Goku and Vegeta here. Um, they, yeah, with, with, with the 2.6 million attacks, I don't really see them killing this guy turn 1. Or, sorry, in one hit. So we can get the second hit in nice. So this is the 3.2 million second hit. So now we need two more to get their full passive here, uh, which is good. Also got two stacks of the stacking attack part of the super attack effect, which is pretty solid. All right, so uh, just sort of zooming through this phase here with this, again, this, this team is just so good that there's not really anything that could actually hurt us here. The funny thing about this team is like, the only unit that can actually get us killed is the Art of Goku and Vegeta, I think, right? I mean, you put them in slot 2 next to the Revival Goku, and if the enemy decides to super them in slot 2, like, that's honestly the only way I could even see ourselves dying at all. But we'll see. Alright, so Piccolo, we're gonna get him his passive active here, right? He's actually gonna super, okay, that's fine. Piccolo can eat this all day. 50k. So Piccolo, before his passive, took 50k from that, huh? And then Goku and Vegeta took 460k. Hmm. Alright. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna get my Gamma built up a little bit here. Uh, the friend Gamma, I believe, is also Rainbow, so not really that big of a, di a difference between mine and the friend. And then I'm pretty sure we end up killing this guy here. I mean, the Gambit just do so much damage, especially Gambit 2 here. This second turn uh, was, yeah, 12.5 million attacks that. The thing with Gambit 2 was on the second rotation that he's on, he potentially could super five times. So, yeah, look how much damage Gambit 1 just did with the crits. And he's at 10 million. He can do this. He can do five of these. <laughs> five of these. That each have a 50% chance to crit. That you know, seems pretty seems pretty fair. All right, goodbye. <laughs> you only have three more coming. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to move on to the Super Baby 2 phase, which is Int. So we are still type neutral. Uh, but we finally do have the rotations that we want here. We have Carnival Goku in slot 1. We have uh, RF Blues in slot 2. Um, and then also don't forget that Piccolo is supporting as well. So what was that? 210,000 defense for the Blues which means that they're going to get their passive and they're still going to get their 50% from the passive as well. So they're, I mean, they're, they're probably hovering around like 370k ish defense here after they super, which it's for a 55% level one links character. It's definitely not like the worst possible number ever, but it's certainly not impressive. I would say. Okay. So it's a good thing. He supered carnival Goku, which means he's not going to super the blues in slot two. Um, we are going to have their full passive here built up. Actually, I guess, yeah, with their full passive, they probably should be over 400k defense here. There's the first attack. Oh, oh, yeah, no, their passive expired, the entrance animation. 
I guess that also is something worth discussing as well, because what happened was I got the ROF blues on the first rotation, but I had to float them off because I already had the Gamma 1 and 2 uh, rotation established there. Uh, just the way that the rotations ended up generating for me on the team. So the problem with that is if you float off Goku and Vegeta, um, you know, slot turn one, they actually end up losing their entrance animation buff when they uh, come back onto rotation because that would have already been uh, three turns, right? So that's why they didn't have their passive active there, which kind of sucks because then we couldn't get their full passive. Or yeah, no, yeah, they didn't have their entrance animation buff active there, which means we couldn't get their full passive active because they didn't do the extra attack. So that does matter because now we're coming into the. I assume we're gonna kill this guy here. Uh, but now we're coming into the fight against Grade 8 Baby. Do we even kill him? Maybe we don't. Let's see. I don't think we do. Uh, but whatever the next rotation happens, we're coming into the next rotation with not with a notly a, a, a notly a not fully built up RF Blue Goku and Vegeta because of the fact that we had to rotate them off there. So that kind of sucks. All right, and then here's my Gamma One again. Not even close to being fully built up here. Uh, but. If he crits and gets an additional, we probably could kill him, but I don't remember what happens. Let's see. I got an additional normal, okay. Alright. Now he's fully built up. Um. So this turn, I was debating on putting them in slot 1 because I really wanted to get their full passive, but it's like, if, if, if this guy supered in slot 1, I actually feel like we could have straight up died. <laughs> I think there's a chance we would straight up lose, so I, I, just, I didn't feel comfortable doing that. So I put Carnival Goku back in slot 1, and uh, we're just going to take this guy out and move on to Grade 8 Baby here. He actually did not end up supering in slot 1, so I think we could have pretty safely put the RF Blues in slot 1 to get the final stack, but it's just too big of a risk. Like, it's, it's not worth it. So, take him out here and move on to the final phase against Golden Great Ape here. Not really too worried because of the gammas. Like, this rotation right here is actually just immortal, right? Piccolo supporting both the gammas. Like, how do you how do you lose <laughs> with this rotation? It's, like, almost impossible. Um, so. I think he does... Yeah, I think I think he actually stuns Gamma 1 here. But, it doesn't. again, it doesn't matter. This is too, too strong of a rotation for this fight, so. Uh, stuns Gamma 1, can't super, whatever. I think... I think I end up exchanging into Vegeta this next turn. Because if I don't now, then we're just going to kill the boss before I can exchange. Yeah, look how much damage the Gamma, Gammas do. Like, Gamma 1 didn't even super, didn't even attack this turn because he got stunned. And this is how much damage we're doing to this guy on this rotation. So I am like, okay, <laughs> 13 million, huh? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, yeah, I have to exchange into Vegeta here just so that we can at least get the animation in the video. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah, that's pretty pretty good damage, Gamma 2. Then we're going to get Piccolo's number, 4 point, was it 4.5? That's actually not too bad. Uh, and then we'll exchange into Vegeta, and that's how I think we will uh, proceed here. Okay, so now we have Vegeta out. He did uh, change the uh, orbs to rainbow for us, which is good. So because he gets 25% crit chance per Rainbow Orb, of course you want to try and get four Rainbow Orbs, but he does need at least three to get his full passive, which we did get there. So now he's at, what was that, 223,000 defense, which is actually not too bad considering he's also getting 50% uh, attack and defense on super attack from his passive. And then he's getting another 50% attack and defense from his super attack effect. So let's just, what, let's just call it 220. So 220, he's getting 110,000 attack and defense uh, sorry, attacking dude. He's getting 110,000 defense on super attack from his passive, and then so that brings him to what 330, and then he's getting another 50% uh, from his super attack effect after that's calculated. So he's going to be at 330, and then he's getting another 50%, which is what 165 that added onto that. So he's he's pretty much at like 
480, let's just call it. He's basically a 480,000 defense on, uh, on that super attack, which keep in mind, he is getting support memory. He is getting the Gamma 1 defensive support as well. So it's not actually that little support, but it's still pretty good, right? Uh, 480,000 defense there. It's not too bad. All right, so now we're going to jump into the Shadow Dragon stage here. And now the reasoning for me jumping into this stage specifically is because I wanted to try and get as much stacking in as possible with the ROF Blues. Um, we did get Carnival Goku in slot 7, huh? All right, so we're obviously going to rotate Gamma 1 here, I think. Is that what we're doing? No, I'm keeping him on. Okay, yeah, actually, that makes sense. Keep him on rotation just to put in slot 1 here, get him built up, and then we can rotate him off next turn. All right, so hoping we get at least... Actually, no, we can't get more than two supers, yeah, with this 55% unit because I didn't give him any skill overs or anything like that. And, of course, they're in. Um, well, I guess we can hope for two supers instead of one super, one normal, right? Because that will at least give us the extra attack stack from the super attack effect. So it was at 2.8 million. We have no offensive support on rotation here. And we get the additional normal, unfortunately. All right. Well, even though we get normals, though, they're still contributing to the passive buildup. So I'll take it. Uh, this guy's at 4.8. That's pretty good. Don't forget, this guy is getting a 200% leader um, from this, uh, this uh, the, the leader skill here, right? Actually, is he from the Gammas? I don't. Is that Goku on Accelerated Battle? I actually don't remember. I don't think so. At the very least, he is getting a bunch of extra links from the Blue Goku and Vegeta that he normally doesn't get on a lot of his other teams. Right? All these Movie Hero teams generally don't have a lot of these like. God, uh, you know, God key or realm of gods in this besides like the the year seven character. So, all right. So from this point forward, it's pretty much just going to be cruise control, right? Again, I think the only character that really can get us killed is actually the showcase unit itself, which is kind of sad. But as long as we don't put them in front of like, you know, very obvious bad situations, we should be okay. Um. This is actually good that we're getting a lot of these normals in with Gamma 2, because that means we have more time to build up. I'm actually kind of hoping Piccolo kills this guy here. And of course he doesn't. Does he kill him here? Okay, perfect. <laughs> I don't want to go into the next uh, rotation with that guy at like 1 HP. Okay, so now we're going to do this. Really good luck. There's no attacks in the middle, because I actually feel like this guy could do a lot of damage <laughs> to Goku and Vegeta if they get hit by a super here, but... Luckily, we don't have to worry about that. All right, so we'll get attacks number three and four in against this guy. Which means we will have the full passive built up for the ROF Blues here. Um, and then we should be starting to see some decent attack numbers from Goku coming in here. But we'll see. All right, so Goku... Okay, we'll get the additional here. All right, so Goku gives us 3.7. We really call that great. And he needs to do one more here. Oh, give me a super. There we go. All right, 4.4. All right, so this is pretty much what he's looking at here. Full passive built up. No support though, right? Uh, yeah, only defensive support from Gamma 1. So like 4.5 without like... You know, I would say a decent portion of his, like, major links active. Because remember, Carnival Goku does work okay with this Goku and Vegeta, but he's not, you know, he's not giving them, like, the Resurrection F links, which actually do matter a lot. Because, like, Resurrection F is giving, I think, what, 10% attack and defense? And then the Super God Combat is giving, I think, 20% attack? So they're missing a decent amount of attack there, and we have no support. So I wouldn't really call 4.5 million, like, actually just, like, beyond terrible for... Um, a 55% level 1 links unit, but it's certainly not good. It is definitely not good. Alright, so now 
We're going to move on to the next phase, which I think is Oceanus. Again, I want to keep Goku supering as long as possible so that we can get as many attack stacks in as possible to have Vegeta do as much damage as possible later on. All right, so now we have a, a support here with Piccolo. And uh, we have some attacks in the middle with them. What's our defense? 290. Like I said, 290,000 defense. Uh, remember, they are still getting 50% attack and defense on super attack. So what is that? 430k ish or something like that. So they're going to be like 430 when they super, which again, it's not crazy good, but it's certainly not like, like trashed here. It's not Raditz, <laughs> uh, but it's definitely not great. That's I'll say that. Okay. So this shouldn't do that much damage. If anything at all. Yeah. Nice damage. 96. And now Goku should be like 5 million. 5.8, yeah. Okay. 5.8. Um, at this point, his entrance animation buff has worn out, which means we cannot get any more additionals here, because int character, 55%. Um, and so from this point forward, we're just going to be just getting supers with them and building them up, and then I think we probably exchange, I think, once we get to Nova Shenron. The gamma's looking pretty insane here. I mean, you guys at this point probably already know how good the gammas are. Not, not really a point for me to explain this rotation. <laughs> like, it's just the way it is. Okay. Defensive gamma one with a 10 million attack stat. 30% chance to crit. I think it's passive was fully built up. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, probably. And there's the additional. Okay. Goodbye, Hoshianus. Alrighty. All right, so now we have a decent amount of the, like the Realm of Gods links active with God Goku, I think. Yeah, I decided to use that Whis because there's uh, a lot of attacks at the end against God Goku, and he could definitely die here. Uh, remember, we're not fighting movie bosses, uh, movie boss characters, so God Goku does not have his 70% uh, damage reduction active. Well, movie bosses or pure Saiyan. So I just didn't want him to get crushed at the end there. All right, so let's see what kind of numbers we get up to with Goku here. Remember, Goku does not have support on this rotation. So honestly, his attack stats probably going to be similar to what we saw in the prior turn because we had support on the prior turn, but we still gained a stack from his super attack effect. So what do we get to here? Goku gives us pretty much the same number, five, yeah, 5.8. But again, no support on this rotation. That's the difference. Okay. Um, so once we get rid of this guy, I think we're going to move on to Nova, and then I think at that point we do exchange into Vegeta. And he actually did end up Super and Goku, so I'm really glad I used that <laughs> Yeah, that's, that would have been really bad if we didn't use that there, but that's fine. Alright, so here we go. Uh, Gamma 1 and 2 going to clean up uh, this guy here. Let's go and take him out. Get a little bit of healing from the blue orbs there. Alrighty. Actually, do we, do we even kill him here? We got pretty unlucky. Does Piccolo kill? Probably not. <laughs> Piccolo probably does not kill. Oh, he does kill. Double super. That's pretty good. All right, so now we're moving on to Nova. Again, I think we do exchange here. We only have the three turns of the rainbow orb changing. I think I'm thinking about whether or not I want to exchange or not. Oh, 
いい加減にしやがれ包帯で戦うって決めたはずだそっ分かったよ<笑>俺様はあいつみたいに甘くはないぞ覚悟しやがれ All right, uh, we got pretty unlucky with the orb changing. Like I said at the beginning of the video, like even though he does change orbs to rainbow, you can get pretty unlucky with the amount of rainbow orbs you get because we we can't even get his full passive here. 197,000 defense. Like he he doesn't have the extra 50% defense from the three rainbow orbs because we we just couldn't get him three rainbow orbs there. So that's really unfortunate. If Nova decides to super Vegeta in the middle, I'm pretty sure we just die. Like there's nothing we can do about that. Um, we just got lucky with the orbs. It's just the way it works with this unit. So I'm really praying Nova supers this Goku here, because <laughs> Vegeta would get toasted by this guy. All right, that's that's good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so what kind of number we got here? Five point. Was that five point one? Is that what it said? Okay. And then what? Like a fifty percent chance to crit here, which we don't get. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we get with this unit. Um, and then I think we should take this guy out next turn with the Gammas. The Gammas should be more than enough to get rid of him. Double super from the friend, Gamma 1. Oh, he has to dodging it, okay. God, Goku could get crushed here. I think we actually get a Dokkan attack, right? We're pretty close to one. Yeah, we get one here. Um, I don't even think I pressed the, uh, little, like, nodes here. Yeah, I think I just skipped this to not waste time. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna kill him anyway, no matter what happens, so. Gamma 2 just gonna turn this guy inside out. Alrighty. Alright, now we're gonna move on to Ice, the final stage here. Ice, the thing with him is he is physical. <laughs> so I'm kinda just like throwing my hands in the air and just saying, alright, if he supers and kills us, then that's it. Like whatever. Um 145k defense. Uh, I think on this turn we can set ourselves up though to get the three rim orbs if we get the yeah, the blue orbs in the middle. That'll drop that orb on the right, and then we can grab those three orbs over there. That'll give us the extra stat boost. So now we're at 223k, which is a lot better. Uh, remember, he's getting two separate instances of 50% uh, defense. He's getting 50% defense from his passive, and then he's getting 50% defense from uh, uh, yeah from his super attack effect. So he again is looking at somewhere in the vicinity of like 480k ish defense here, which is definitely not good enough to be able to survive a super from this guy. So just praying that we don't get supered here and. <laughs> We'll be fine. <laughs> uh, we do end up getting the crit. Remember, we do have a 75% chance to crit with the three rainbow keys for us here. Looks like he didn't decide to super, which is perfect. Now we're looking pretty good here. All right. And at this point, I think we end up just killing this guy with the gammas. He does lock gamma one at the end, which is whatever. Who cares? Uh, he can't do anything here, so that's game over. Um, but yeah, I guess let me know down below what you guys think of the ROF Blue Goku and Vegeta here. Again, 55% level 1 links. This is definitely a character that I think severely depends on dupes to perform even anywhere close to the level of a lot of the recent characters we've gotten. So um, I wouldn't really be too harsh on them, but I think their, de their design is fine. Um, the only thing I would have wished they would have done is just given them a bit... A bit higher values <laughs> in their passive like instead of giving them like a 50 percent attack and defense buff on super maybe it's 90 percent, or maybe it's 100 percent. uh maybe they stack up you know attack and defense instead of just attack in the goku version like stuff like that like just give them extra stuff to buff themselves with but i think the the core design and the skeleton of this character actually is pretty good i, I think it's fine but yeah there we go um hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you all in the next one.